Glad to be in the house of the Lord. If you're glad, clap your hands. If you're extremely glad, stomp your feet. I got a few steps. But it's so good to be in the house of the Lord in his presence. I thank God for, for how good God has been, not only to me, but to you all. Listen to the testimonies. And God lets you know that he's real and he's still activating his love upon his people. So God is a good God. He's a merciful God. He's just God by himself, ain't he? Yes. Hey, man, he, I mean, there's nobody else like God. There is no other God. He's just a wonder. I tell you, man, just the song and worship service is just, I love, you know, praising God. You know, I'm just in my own corner over there just having a good time, man. And I thought about years ago going to clubs and my wife said I couldn't dance and I knew a lot of a lot of people man that boy my brother and them they used to dance boy I mean them guys used to go you know a lot of my friends they used to go but man when they got saved I ain't seen none of them get up and dance I said yeah I said well Lord you know boy I couldn't dance back then I can't dance now but I'm still gonna dance for you Jesus you know, I still can cut a step for the Lord, and it's the same step. <laughs> it's a familiar step, you know. But, man, I don't know what's wrong with people. You know, you get, you, God bring you out of a mess, save your soul, delivering you, and you can't clap your hands for the Lord. You can't stump your feet. You know, my brother, he's sister. And Wanda, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, he can go, you know. Let us have a, a wedding or something. Boy, he can, he can, man, as you say, Pastor, he can cut the rug. <laughs> he can go. But, boy, he's sitting in church. He's be looking at me like, you didn't do that in the clubs? I said, no, I didn't. But I got a reason. I don't know about nobody else. I got a reason to do what I'm doing right now. He gave me the best reason to do what I'm doing right now. Praise him. You know, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I'm going to dance for Jesus until he, till I can't dance, dance no more. I'm going to clap for Jesus until I can't clap no more. I'm going to praise him until I can't praise no more. And the only way I can't be able to do that is I won't be here. As right. so long as I remember, I'm going to praise God and lift him up and give him glory. Hallelujah. He is good. He's been too good to me. You know, listen to them songs. You know, the Lord has been good to me. Woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. I was singing. I was putting my own words in there. Clothed me. Put shoes on my feet. Food on my table. Roof over my head. God has been too good to me. And when I look back where he has brought me from, I don't know about nobody else, where he brought me from, my soul cries hallelujah because I know where he brought me from. Not just, not just from a place, but a state of mind, a state of being. That's where he brought me from. I don't think like I used to think. You know? I thank God. I got a man, I tell you, you know, I'll be saying, Lord, why am I I'm always crying when I'm praising you? I'm over just be crying and uh, trying to pull it together. He said, Don't worry about it, just cry. You know? You know, just go ahead and cry. I'll be over trying to sing and, you know, get all teared up and the, the words and going on. I got to wait for the next verse. <laughs> but that's how, I mean, that's how. Good God has been to me. You know, he brings tears to my eyes, tears of joy for what he has done for me. I don't know what you came to do this morning, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do this morning, but I come to lift him up. And he said, if I be lifted up, if I will be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, he said. So we got to lift him up so he can start drawing these men, women, Boys and girls to him. If he be lifted up, he'll draw them all to him. So I'm lifting you up, G. We're lifting you up the best that we know how, Lord. We give you the praise the best that we know how, Lord. And we know, God, that you're going to do the work. God is a merciful God. He's real. He's real to me. I don't know about nobody else. He's real. Oh, yes. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. 
But I found out I cannot live without him because he is so real to me. My God, I thank him this morning. I thank God for just being God. I thank God for my past. I'm just going to stick with that. You know, I don't know what else to say, but my past. I know she all past it too. <laughs> I thank God for my past. I thank God for her being here today. Thank God for keeping you. Thank God for strengthening you. Thank God for continuing to encourage you, Pastor. Thank God for allowing me to stand in your stead in such a place. We was talking about this morning about gifts uh, of the Spirit, how God gives gifts to people. And we was talking about, you know, we can't hardly, you know, stand before people, don't know how to start a conversation with people. I don't know if, you know, we don't know if I'm like, yeah. Because a lot of people home in on certain gifts because they feel like these certain gifts that God put people in their prestige gifts. They gifts of, you know, people look up on and say, I want to do that. You know, I want to do this. Man, I never said that. But I'd be sitting out there and saying, Lord, I can't do that. It's not in me. You chose the wrong person. I understand what Moses was talking about. <laughs> It just ain't none of me. I don't know what to say to people when I come to, but I don't know. When I'm out there and get here, you know, God just fills my mouth. And I'm not a, well, my wife said I talk all the time now. She said he always talking to somebody. I can't help it. You know, I just can't help it when I think of the goodness and all that he's done for me. You know, I got to tell somebody. I got to tell somebody how good Jesus is. And so what you think you can't do, don't think that. Because God going to equip you to do what you need to do. When God gives you a gift, you know, he gives gifts to all men. But God specializes in, you know, he gives you gifts that, uh, that you specialize in. You know, gift of healing. I believe that she got the gift of healing. Can't nobody tell me no different because that gift has been exercised and it worked on me so many times. You know, got so many witnesses gift of faith you know God specializes in these gifts you know but at any given moment he was talking this morning that God can use you in any of those gifts any of them but there is a special gift that's upon your life that God wants to use and we got to search ourselves and seek God and find out what these gifts are because God want to use us no matter what nobody say Get your Bibles and go with me to the book of Luke, chapter 11. I thank God for my wife and my children. I truly thank God. I truly thank God for my wife. I truly, truly thank the Lord for my wife. No, ain't nothing happened, Pastor. <laughs> but I feel like I need to say that I truly thank the Lord for my wife. Ma'am. <laughs> well, you know what, Pastor? You might say that, but don't be surprised if you get a phone call. You know, sometimes I feel like you know, I don't want to worry, Pastor, but you know, we, we, need, we need we need you. We need the elders. You know, when David was king and all these other folk king, they, they just didn't have the king and the prophet. They had elders. You know, we need, we need our elders. <laughs> That's right. That's what I'm talking about, you know, because, hey, look, we don't know everything. You know, I don't know everything. I'm quick to tell you I don't know. You know, and walk away and say, Lord, why don't I know? <laughs> I go and find somebody that do know. You know, I know one thing I start doing, I start seeking the Lord. You know, why I don't know, Lord? You know, but we need, we need you. We, we need the elders because we have to. So much that the elders have gone through that they can tell me. You know, I, I love old folk. I love to sit with them. I can sit with them all day long. They'll never wear my ear out. Because they got so much wisdom, knowledge, 
They got a lot of understanding. They've been through a whole lot that can help us get through where we're going. You know, so I love old people, man. I used to sit with my grandmother as a teenager. I mean, didn't have a girlfriend. Who at 17 years old go and sit with people in their 80s and 90s? A lot of people say something wrong with that kid, you know. But I used to go down to them projects in the Peabody's and sit with my grandmother, spend a night with her, and she just talk, 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 and I'd be sitting there on that, chair, that little white chair, just be listening. Just listening, 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 listening. I guess that's why I got an old spirit, they say, old man. Because I love being around old folk. You know, they can teach me a thing or two because they seen a thing or two. That was the commercial said. Yeah. You seen a thing or two. Yeah, because I ain't, I ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. Eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. Neither has it entered to the hearts of men what God has prepared for us. I mean, we just got to keep on living, you know. It ain't time to throw in the towel now. It's time to keep on running, running for Jesus. I want to turn your attention to 11, chapter, Luke 11, chapter 11. I'm going to start at the first verse. And I hope. That you be blessed this morning. You know, I do my due diligence, but I'm still waiting on God. I'm still waiting on a lot of things from the Lord, but I just refuse. I refuse to tap out. I refuse to give up. I refuse to. So, Father, we come before you right now, before the throne of grace, Lord God, where we can find mercy and obtain that grace, Lord God. Paul said, come boldly. So, God, we're coming boldly this morning, Lord God. Oh, God, asking you, Father God, to just help us this morning. Asking you, Father God, to just move for us this morning, Father God. Lord, asking you, God, to use me, God, to speak to your people, Lord God, that I be your voice for the time, oh, God, that you have allotted me, God, that you use me, Father God. Oh, God, in the presence of this people, Lord God, I pray, Father God, that the Holy Ghost, Lord God, will take over me, God, and speak to me and speak through me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lead and guide me, Holy Ghost. I know you have uh, uh, spoke to me, God, and you caused me to write some things down, but, Lord, I want to be led by your spirit, Lord God. I want this thing done your way. And I say, let your will be done this morning, Father. These are the blessings, Father, that I ask in Jesus' name. Give God some praise this morning. He is worthy to be praised. I'm going to start with the first verse. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is in debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So they were wanting to know how to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. John taught his disciples how to pray i don't think it's written nowhere where john what what he taught them to pray how he taught them to pray how he taught them to pray but jesus told them to pray this prayer and it's in all of the gospels so this is the way we pray and then he he says down here in luke number five and he said and he said unto them after he taught them how to pray which of you should have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. Y'all notice something about that, that scripture? He said, which of you should have a small case friend? Shall go to his capital friend. Jesus is saying something right there. He said, and say, say to him, lend me three loaves. Which of you got a friend? I don't know too many friends uh, like that friend today. And we got all kind of friends in the world today. And some of these friends, man, they are something else. 
And I had some friends that I thought they were my friends. Man, they were smile in your face, stab you in the back, cut your throat, run you over them. I mean, the friends that you hearing uh, about today, how they are going one places, they're both going to a place and only one come back, two go out, but one come back. They killing each other. They're lying on each other. They setting each other up. Man, I, I don't understand the companionship, the friendship that people keep today with some of these folks. You know, and you got to be careful about a friend. You know, they jealous of you. They envious. You know, and they pretend to like you. Probably wish you was in the same state that they were in. You know, and people married, happily married. Oh, they go through. You got a so-called friend telling you what you ought to do in your marriage, and they ain't married. I never got that. Or they telling you what you ought to do in your marriage when that marriage is all jacked up. You know, what kind of friends are those? Give me a friend that went through something and still going through something with the same somebody. You don't, don't, don't give me a friend that went through something and ain't going through nothing but wants you to come out of what you in too. You know, it's all kind of friends. Out there. I'm just touching the, the tip of the iceberg. It's some boogers out there, as Pastor would say. I mean, it is some, I mean, they, if, if, if you ain't broke, they want you to be broke. If you ain't lonely, they want you to be lonely. You know, if you ain't broken hearted, they want you to be, they want you to be down because they down. They don't want to see nothing work for you because ain't nothing working for them. Friends are something else. We need to get rid of them kind of friends. Micah said anyway in Micah 7, 5, he said, trust ye not in a friend. He said, don't trust in those kind of friends. Because, man, we, we find ourselves linked and hooked up with all kind of folk. This is my friend. I, my sons come home. It's like every time they would come home. Every time they would come home and say, oh, this is our cousin. Every, I mean, if it was a boy, girl, don't matter, this is our cousin. And I would look at my children. I said, when they get by, I say, come here, man, let me tell you something. <laughs> I know you friendly and you like people, but everybody ain't your cousin. Because they in your family, they don't mean they're related to you. You know, so you got to be careful who you're hanging out with. Getting in trouble for them so-called friends. Friends acting a fool up there at school. But my sons... They won't step up and be, be the bodyguard. This my cousin. This my cousin. And that's my cousin. Well, for, for, for long, you're going to run out of cousins. You ain't going to have nobody to stand up against. So you got to be careful about your friends. Micah said, 7-5, trust ye not in a friend. Not those kind of friends. You got to be careful who you call your friend. I got associates. But I got this one brother that I've always called a friend. He's a pastor now today. And if he's listening, he'd know who I'm talking about. She knows who I'm talking about. He is a friend. I met him in high school. And man, I tell you, me and him was like two peas in a pod. Thinking about Jonathan and David, how they loved one another. And people got that relationship all messed up. Talking about they were homosexuals and all that stuff. And then they got on me and my best friend. So what's wrong with y'all? Y'all always together. And, you know, you all, if somebody say something about, about Fred, you're going to say something. If somebody say something about you, you're going you gonna to stick up for We was really friends. And what I like about this friend is that when he saw me or we saw each other finna do something out of the ordinary that wasn't right, we didn't just step back and say, I'm going to see what's going to happen. Like, hey, man, don't, don't you know you shouldn't be, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. No, come on, man. Let's, 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 let's go. Let's get out. A real friend going to do that. But them fake friends, they're going to let you walk right on into some trouble, get yourself into some trouble, and say, man, I, you know, I had your back. I, I, you know, I, I was there. <laughs> I mean, I've been in some crazy situations. But I had to realize that I 
the people that I hung out with wasn't my friend. One of my older brothers told me in front of a bunch of my so-called friends, and he said some words that I cannot utter and in front of them to let them know and let me know they ain't none of your friends. They ain't going to run. Sound like one of them old hirelings don't the past. Don't sound like no shepherd. You know, when, when things get hot, they're going to take off. You know? But he said, Micah 7 5. Ain't talking about none of us in here. He said, Trust not <laughs> in a friend. And if you read the rest of that scripture, you're going to question. What do you mean by this? <laughs> so I let you read it. Trust ye not in a friend. Don't trust in those kind of friends. He said, and he said, and which of you have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves. Now there is a friend that you can go to. You know, I don't care what time of day it is. What hour it is, I don't care what situation that you're in, there is a friend that's going to always be with you. You know, uh, Proverbs 17, 17 says, he says, a friend loveth at all times. There ain't no certain time that this friend loves you. This friend going to love you unconditionally. This friend going to always love you. When y'all get mad at each other, you're going to find yourself coming back to one another. That's a friend. You know, the friend going to love you at all times. He's going to always be with you. When, you. when you're wrong, he's still your friend. That don't mean he's going to go along with the junk that you're doing. You know, he's still your friend. That, that don't mean that he's going to go along with what you say or what you believe. We're still boys. You know, we, you know that's my girl. I'll be saying that's my girl. we still friends. But I can't go along with a lot of stuff. I love you. But I can't go along with a lot of things. He said, there is a friend that says, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. There's a friend that will always be there. This friend will never leave you nor forsake you. This friend won't give up on you. This friend, you know, uh, even though you thought that he left you, but this friend is always there. This friend won't turn his back on you. I'm talking about this friend. The capital F-R-I-E-N-D. This friend don't care what time of day, what time of night it is. This friend wants you to call him. This friend is waiting for you to call him. This friend says, in fact, seek me and you'll find me. In fact, seek me early. Early in the morning, I'm going to be your friend. In the noonday. When things just start to get hot, I'm going to be your friend. Late in the midnight hour, when you don't think nobody up but them old folk on them television shows, late at night, talking about their profits, and God wants you to give you all your money, give them all your money, and he going to be your friend. He going to bless you with this. He going to bless you with that. If you sow that $10,000 seed, God going to do that thing. That thing that you've been waiting for. You got to sow that seed first. That ain't no friend. Man, that's a wolf in sheep clothing. You know, the gig is up. This friend, he's going to instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. Not the way that you might go, the way that you want to go. He said he's going to instruct you and teach you in the way that you shall go. That means not maybe you're going to go that way. This friend going to lead and guide you in the way that you should go. This friend will. He said, what kind of, he said, do you have any friends that, that will be, that you should go to him in the midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves because he have need of them. This friend ain't going to run off on you. This friend ain't going to be too busy. You know, we got some friends, they are just too busy for you. I'll call you back. They look at the phone. Oh, man. That's him again. That's her again. A friend, you never know when your friend going to need you. You never know when you don't need your friend. You look at that phone like, man, this, man, this person been getting on my last nerve. 
I had a brother that was really going through. He was going through a divorce. And every single day, just about, not just while I was at work, on my way back to the shop, on my way to the house, at the house, this brother really needed somebody. He would call me, and I'm not going to lie, I'd look at the phone like, oh. But I couldn't not answer that phone. Because one of those times, I let him listen, I listened to him and, you know, talked to him about a lot of things, and he was just upset and just hurt. I said, brother, I'm, you know, I hear what you're saying. I don't understand what you're going through. But I tried everything to try to encourage this brother. I said, man, you're still saved, man. You're still going on for, for the Lord. I said, I understand you just hurt. I said, what if, if this woman decided to come back? Would you be willing to take her back? I said, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I said, what you crying for then? You, you don't know if you're going to take your wife back. I said, if the Lord will come, I said, you'll be all right, but we don't know what her state might be. I said, what we need to be doing be praying for her, that God will get her mind right and get her soul back in order. You know, I said, I understand you're crying, you're hurt, but this one time I called, he called, he was talking about taking his life. And I, that was the time I was, looked at the phone, I laid it down, said, man, I'm at work, I can't, keep, <laughs> I, can't be, I can't keep doing this. But the Spirit of the Lord said, pick that phone up, and I picked it up, and I listened to him, and he was like, I'm, I'm done, I'm, I'm finna just, I'm finna do it, Fred. You know, I'm, I'm tired. I can't take it no more. And so we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked and we talked to where today, today that man is doing just great. He's, he's got his relationship back with his wife, his family. I mean, everything was just torn, taken from him. You know, he, had, he almost had the trial of Job on his life. But everything, every time I talk, he said, man, I'm finna go to my family house. You know, I'm finna go to my family house. And all I would tell him, I say, man, you just got, you just never know. I say, you just got to put it in your heart and your mind whether you're going to accept her uh, back or not. Regardless of where she been or what she done, it, 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 it's like uh, uh, Hosea and Goma. I say, regardless, where, where, where she been, where, what she done, or you still going to be her covering. It's regardless where the church has been. Where the church is going, God is still loving us. He's still our covering. He never turned his back on us. And so I said, man, you, you got to be, be ready because we believe, don't you, brother? We believe that God is a God of reconciliation. We believe God going to reconcile some things. And when God start reconciling, he got to start dealing with that other person on that receiving end, that hurt person. And so you got to be available for your friend. A, a true friend. And we got somebody that's available for us any time of day. Any hour. Your lunch break. You can get up 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, you can call this friend. His line ain't going to be busy. You ain't going to get that. You know, he's, he's there waiting for you to call. But ain't too many of us calling. You know, so this friend ain't going to run off. I like what David said. David said, look, I have set the Lord always before me. You know, I don't know what people sitting before them. They sitting their mamas. They sitting their daddies. They sitting their, their uncles. They sitting the bishops and all these folk. They sitting all these big people before them. David said, I have set the Lord always before me. And he said, for he is because he is at my right hand. Man, when you got, a, you got somebody at your right hand, that means they're your right hand man. You know, you can always depend on him. He says, he's at my right hand. He's, all, he's the only one I can trust. He's the only one that ain't going to lead and guide me the wrong way. He's the only one going to tell me the truth. He's the only one going to stick by my side. When things are going good, and most definitely when you need it, when things are going bad. He says, I set him always before me. He's at my right hand. He's a true friend. He's a real friend. And I shall not be moved, David said. You got to set the right one on your right hand. You got to be in a place where you, where you know that you got somebody you can call on. I can't, 
I can't call my wife all the time. Pastor says, she, Brother Al, I can't counsel you. I, can't, I don't know if I can get y'all in that office now, you know, and, and counsel you now. We got to have somebody else that we got to get to. Somebody else is standing behind, Pastor. Somebody else is standing behind your husband, behind your wife, behind your boyfriend. Somebody else standing there and say, okay, yeah, I'm next. But for some reason, sometimes we feel like, we, we, we seem like we skip that person behind them and go to another person. It's Jesus standing behind past and saying, okay, well, well past says she can't help you, brother. You know, you going to call me? You, you, you going you gonna to knock on my door? I, I stand here waiting for you. Jesus said, I'm standing here waiting, waiting for his people. And he said, verse 7. I'm going to read six again. He said, for, for a friend, if I stop at five, yeah. For a, for a friend of mine is, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he's from within, shall answer and say, trouble me not. Boy, that's, that's the little friend. <laughs> That's the, the small case, friend. Trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Jesus said this. He said, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet but because of his importunity. He will rise and give him as many as he needs. This friend is not only going to get up out of his bed, not just because it's his buddy. He said, but because of his persistence, because of his dogmatic spirit that this man just won't stay. He won't leave my door. He, he just he's not. I don't know if the man was knocking or calling or knocking and calling. It don't say, but it just says he was at his door troubling him. And this man said, because, not because this is my friend I'm going to get up and, and give him, but because of his persistence, because of his dogmatic uh, spirit. You know, we just got to have a dogmatic spirit. We got to have that confidence. Because of this man's confidence, he knew if I just keep on knocking, keep on calling, David, 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 David. Look, man, I need something. Jesus. Jesus. How many of us keep, how many of us still knocking on Jesus' door today? How many of us gave up? How many of us turned and walked away and said, Jesus ain't going to even, he ain't going to even answer the door. This man said, but because of his persistence, because he was dogmatic, because he wouldn't quit, he just wouldn't stop. He said, but because of his confidence that I'm going to get up out of my bed, leave my children and give him as much, not three loaves. He said, as much as he need. Now, if there's a man, there's a man that would do that. How great is our God? How great is our God if we just keep on knocking? Some folk just get tired of knocking. I ain't said I, I, I'm still, I, my knock might get a little faint. It might get a little weak. It, it, it may not have been as strong, but I'm still knocking and get low. I get weary sometimes. You get weary sometimes. But God gives you strength. The Holy Ghost gives you strength. I've been knocking, knocking for years, seeking the Holy Ghost. Was over there when Sister Harvey was here preaching one time. Y'all should remember that. And she, I was up on the stage. And my job was to let the cord out and bring the cord back when the preachers, you know, when they preach and they walk around on a woman's don't want them to trip. And I'm sitting up there and I'm, I'm like this. I'm watching their feet. Then I, it get tangled. I have to knock it over and I pull it back. But she started to minister to me. Then I get the sturming lips. And I thought, here it come, Lord. <laughs> my lips just stammered. Then I get out in my van, my work van. I shut my leg in, <laughs> in the door. And I begin to pray and I start stammering. I said, Lord, I ain't going to quit. I might have got a little bit discouraged. I ain't going to lie. I'm like, Lord, why ain't, 
Why ain't I? Why, why, why can't I be baptized with the Holy Ghost? Why ain't I spoken tongues? All of that stuff. I see all of this going on. I'm like, man, I've been in this church for a long time, man. And man, my God. And I, I remember Jesus saying, you know, not many days from hence. You know, not many days. I said, Lord, it's been a long, it's been years. It's been years. Well, what's, what is the problem, Lord? But I just wouldn't give up. You just can't give up, saints. You can't stop knocking on, on heaven's door. You can't give in to the devil. You got to know that if God, look, this man has so, so much confidence to where uh, 1 John uh, 5, 14 and 15, John said this. He said, and this is the confidence, the faith that we have in him. And who? In Jesus as believers who are entitled to that if we ask anything according to his will, anything that lines up, that's consistent with his purpose and his plan for your life, then he said, then he hear us. And he goes on and said, and if we know he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know, I don't know about nobody else, when I ask God for somebody, I keep on knocking, he said, then we know that we have the petitions that we desire him. We're gonna, you're going to get what you come looking for. If you stay knocking on Jesus, door, if you're just persistent about what you want from God. One, one night, August the 23rd, 2023, we had pr Wednesday night, we in here praying. I wasn't seeking the Holy Ghost. But I was seeking periodically. I would get in my own little chamber and say, Lord, here I am. And I said, Lord, I, ain't, I am not finna make up no tongue. I said, if I don't never speak, then so be it. You know, I'm past that stuff where people say, if you don't speak in tongue, you ain't saved. Well, this one brother really had me then. I was searching all the scriptures. I said, man, look, I ain't spoken tongue. I ain't saved. Pastor didn't tell me that now. Somebody hiding some stuff. from I'm, I mean, I'm searching the scriptures. You know, found out that was a lie. You know, Paul said, do all speak in tongues? Do all prophesy? Everybody don't do this stuff. All right? But I wanted it. I wanted because you know why? It was a promise. It was a promise. And I want every promise that God promised me. I don't know about you, but you might leave some of the promises on the table. But I want every promise that he promised me. Good health, I want it. Prosperity, I want it. A right mind, I want it. I want everything that God promised me because God don't make no promises and break them. And so that one night we was, we was here, I think Jackie was here. And you left, I think. I don't know, but me, brother Joe, and sister Vicky was here. And I was telling them about me witnessing to this Asian lady. And we both couldn't understand each other hardly nothing. I thought, Lord. This would be a good time for the Holy Ghost to fall on me and cause me to speak in Mandarin. <laughs> Before, I was like, Lord, I stood there for a while, too, talking to her, telling her about Jesus. Like, I said, you never heard Jesus? She said, I said, really? I'm thinking, Lord, what, what, you know, how do I reach this woman? So the Lord let me, the Lord let me reach her a little bit because I was telling her how good he was, what he did, how he died for our sins. You know, that we don't have to live like we're living. You know, God, you know, when we leave here, we're going to a place, a place that we know where we're going to be all right, a place where we know there's healing, a place that we know there ain't no more crying, ain't no more because she had a sick husband in there and, and she was just crying. And so I telling them about this testimony and, and I said, man, I, I sure wish I, the Holy Ghost would have came up on me how did I put that? But anyway, I say, I'm sitting there, brother so Joe sitting there and sister over there. Brother Joe said, what? <laughs> he said this. He said, brother Al, can I pray for you? I said, yeah. Pastor, you know I ain't turned down no prayer for nobody I know to say. You can pray for me a hundred times. When I was, getting, when I was sick, how many times y'all come over my house after people had already prayed? I didn't never say, well, somebody, come on. 
One time, pastor came. She brought half the church. Dee Dee, the kid. She brought them all. I'm like, bring them all in. I don't care. My head ain't, 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 ain't brushed. I don't care. I need to get up out of this state. So you got to believe God. So I'm telling them about them. Brother Joe said, what? He said, brother, Al, can I pray for you? I said, yeah. I jumped on up. And he, he just started praying. He said, don't even think about it. You know, he started praying. And Sister Vicky, she, she was behind me. And we praying, we praying. Here come the stammering lips again. And I'm thinking to myself, I've been there several times. I said, Lord, I got, this thing got to go a little bit farther. It's got to go past stammering lips. And we got, I guess we were getting tired. Sister Vicky put her head in the middle of my back. She, said, she started praying. She started praying. And when she did that, I started smiling like, Lord, we want this bad. They want it bad for me. And so when we heard the stammering lips, God is so good, man. God is so good. Give God some praise. God is a wonder, man. So we got tired, I guess. We dismissing. On we, on we go out. They left. Holy Ghost caught me at the door and said, you stop and you go back to the altar. And I went back to that altar, man, began to pray. And here come the word. Of, here come the power of God falling down on me, man. I began to speak in this unknown tongue, man. I'm thinking, is this real, Lord? Is this for real? I started walking around here and I started singing. I got to the point to where I, st- I said, I'm going to call my rifles. And I was speaking in tongue. And I started speaking. I started singing and started praising God. And I said, there it is, Lord. There it is, Jesus. There it is. It's been years. He said, but he said, not many days from his. Not many days. Not many days. Look, God is telling us, don't stop knocking on his door. Don't stop. You got to be persistent about what, what you want from God. And here this man is saying, look, Lord, he said, friend, I need three loaves for my friend. Why? Why? out one friend coming let me say friends right there yeah he said one friend why you need three loaves why 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 he need three loaves i'm like lord what is man going he he that hungry you know because god said you get weary don't you yes lord i do man should not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god he said well he needed some bread. I said, okay, Lord, yeah. He might have needed some, some loaves, but man should not live by, every, by bread alone, but by every word. See, sometimes we look at this stuff monetarily, like he needed a sandwich or something. You know, that bread represented Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. This man needed something because this man was on a journey. You know, he was traveling. Don't you get tired when you get tra- when you start traveling? You know, and they, and they were walking on and they was riding donkeys. We'd be in cars and buses and planes. We'd be up there yawning. I'm tired. You know, I'm tired. I'm going, I'm going to go where to Florida like you're going to walk or get on a, a wagon or something and go to Florida. You're driving. Boy, I'm wore out. You know? But this man sounded like this man was going through something. So he needed some bread. For his man, for his friend. I need something. He was at the, at, the, at the big friend's house. I need something for my friend. Jesus, Lord, open up this door. How many of y'all got friends out there that need something? How many of us have got children out there that need something? We better be knocking on this door. I ain't stop knocking. I'm still saying, I heard what you said. I received it, Pastor. And I, and I, I quote it. I take it back to Jesus. Lord, you said. You said you're going to save all my children. You said they're coming in like domino. You said this, Lord, and I'm believing it. And I still ask him. I'm still knocking. Lord, where they at? Where the first one is supposed to fall? Because when one fall, the rest of them going to fall. That's how my children roll. That's how yours roll. When one came in, all of them came in. That's, how was, that's, that's God. That's how he do things. And so he said, I need some bread. Jesus said, I am the bread. I'm the bread of life. And he said, I need three loaves. I said, Lord, what is three? Pastor, I know you're just eating this up. 
He said, yeah, boy, I know what that means. That means complete. That means complete. So here it is. <laughs> you, you, cannot, you cannot please God without faith. Not at all. You can't please him at all without faith. I'm looking for my scripture. Where, where the completion is. He needed the bread, the bread of life, and the bread of life going to make you whole. It's going to make you complete because Paul said, even though on your journey, he said, after that you have suffered a while, God what make you perfect. He established you. He strengthens you. And he settles you. He mean that's just it. Once God get a hold of you, that's just it. He's going to make you perfect. He'll make you whole. That's what the three loaves of bread mean. He's going to make this man whole. When I, if, this, if this friend ever open up this door and give me this bread, if God ever open up your mouth and give you the words to speak to your friend, he's going to make them perfect. He's going to make he going to establish them. He's going to strengthen them. And that settles it, Paul said. That's just it, you know. Ain't nothing else, no, no, ain't nothing else nobody can do. So God wants you to continue to knock. Continue to knock on heaven's door. It may be late in the midnight hour. You may get tired sometimes knocking. I know y'all probably saying, well, well, we've been praying and knocking, rolling, screaming. We've been here in late midnight hour, but hang on in there. Keep on knocking. Keep on praising. Keep on calling God. Keep on calling out to him. He said anyway, he said, call to me and I will answer you. God wants you to call to him. Keep calling. I've been calling him. Well, cry loud. That's what the prophet said. Maybe he don't hear you. <laughs> Maybe, maybe he don't hear you. Cry loud. He said, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. God, try, he wants to show us something, but it ain't in, it ain't in the house. It ain't in the car. It ain't in the clothes. It ain't in them shoes, them shiny shoes. What I'm trying to say. It ain't in those things that God is want you seeking and searching for. In fact, Jesus said, look, these are the things that the Gentiles seek after. The world is looking for those things. Don't y'all come to me, you know, if you need it. You know, ain't nothing wrong with asking God, but don't, don't be persistent about asking, Lord, I need this car. Oh, Lord, I need this house. You know, get the house, can't nobody come in it. Get the car, can't nobody drink no water in it. Can't, you you going to pick them up for church? No, no, no. Them kids ain't getting, in my, ain't getting in my brand new car. You know, James said that we ask amiss that we may consume it of our own lust. You know, we want these things. You know, God want to give you something much, much more greater than those things. He said, look, don't even worry about asking those things. Because the Father which is in heaven already know that you have needed those things. God is telling us, man, through this passage, Jesus is telling us through this passage that there is something greater that we're supposed to be asking for. And I'm going to show it to you. Hath he told him about how persistent this man is? How, how he kept calling, how he kept knocking. He goes on down here and say, verse 9, and he says, I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh shall find. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, 
Will, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a, a, a scorpion? He said us being fathers, evil fathers. Some of us just despise our kids, but anyway, he said if you, you fathers being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. He said, down here he says, and if then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give unto you the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit that asked him? He didn't say nothing about no bread. He didn't say nothing about your car, your house. He didn't say anything about that. God, The Lord already told us through Paul, but my God will supply all your needs. According to your riches and according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, he going he he going he ain't going he ain't going never see you without clothes on your back, shoes on your feet. All we gotta do is ask Tawana and Jackie. They got enough to supply everybody. All you gotta do is touch their heart. They go look, boy. Somebody gave away an expensive purse not long ago. Don't tell me God, look, God got it. And it's amongst, the inheritance is amongst his people. That's why he don't want you to forsake not to come together. And I got a few suits, I'm moving the bike and wear them in here, you know, that I would be glad to give up because I'm always, Brittany say, well, he always wearing the same stuff. We got what we need. We got an abundance of those things. And they just sitting there. I went in the closet this morning to try to find me a covering to put on. I said, man, shoot. It's too much work to even try to get if I really need it. I closed the closet back. I'm trying to tell you it's just so full. You know? He said, how much more should the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit? Now in that coat, them shoes, that house, those things has their purpose. And they can only serve that purpose. That's it. But the Holy Spirit, I said, Lord, why did you say that? He said, because in this, in this gift, the Holy Spirit ain't too many people being persistent about asking for those gifts. When was the last time I asked myself, Lord, when was the last time I asked you, Lord God, for the spirit of discernment? When was the last time, God, I asked you for the spirit of healing, for the gift of healing? When was the last time I asked you for the, for the spirit of uh, 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 patience? When was the last time we asked God for these type of things? These things going to make you profitable in all things. You know, we ask amiss. I don't think the church has been asking right. God, yeah, I, well, God said if I needed my call, I'm going to keep. All you got to do is touch and agree and it's going to happen. I believe that. He's shown it to me too many times. All you got to do is touch it's going to happen. But we got to ask for the more precious gifts. He said, I give you the Holy Ghost. And in the Holy Ghost, is everything. The Holy Ghost, we need, we need the prophets. We need the, the apostles. We need the teachers. We need all. We, the church is barely hanging on. The church is it, it, it's not growing because we're not being persistent. We're not knocking on heaven's door for these gifts to help my brother, to help my sister. Oh, God, I need some shoes. But, Lord, my brother need to be saved. My children need to be pulled out of some things. When was the last? We got to have those gifts. We got to have them. They just ain't sitting up there. For no reason, we got to be persistent until God bless us with these gifts. I was waiting for a long time for the Holy Ghost. I was waiting for a long time for a car. I was waiting for a long time to get, me a, get my family a brand new car. For years. I don't know how many years we was married before we got a brand new car. But you got to be persistent. You got to know how to ask, what to ask. That's what he's asking. Asking God's will. That's his will. 
His will is to take care of you. He's going to do that. He ain't like some of these fathers out here. He's the best friend. There is a friend that's sticking closer than any brother. And his name is Jesus. He ain't like some of these daddies out here. Donate the, the seed and run off. Don't care if the children are being attended to. Don't care how they've been raised. Don't care when they get in the street that the streets that the devil's going to devour them. They don't care. But God is asking us to ask him for the most precious gifts. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift that's in the gifts and the the fruits that's in the Holy Ghost. Peace, when was the last time I said, Lord, help me to be kind? Or I was saying, Lord, don't let this person say nothing to me. I can give him, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell him. I'm telling you, man, if he, if he, if he say one thing to me, <laughs> I'm going to let him have it, Pastor. And then I got to go and repent. Then I can't say nothing else to him about nothing about Jesus. I know this brother that watches this person every single day. How I know this? Because he goes and tells this other brother, hey, man, what is so-and-so, so-and-so eating? Man, what is he over there talking about? Man, what, what, what is he doing every day? He said, man, I get so tired of him. I said, why don't you just go and tell him to go and ask him? Ask him for himself. I said, <laughs> Boy, that was me. If he come to me and say that, I'm, I'm going to let him have it. You can't let him have it. You got to ask God, to, Lord, give me some patience with this brother. Lord, let me, show me how to love this brother. You know, show me how to, to humble myself, Lord God. You know, when, when, when was the last time we asked God? When was the last time that the church, the church, the body of Christ was persistent about the Holy Ghost, about these gifts and callings that God has for us. Find out. God has spoken to you about your gift. Ask God to stir that gift up in you. And I believe once the gifts still operating like they're supposed to, just like when God bless you with these temporal things, you know, you get happy. Woo, I got it. Come here and shout. Get that, got that new car passed. Woo, I got this. But for some reason, some reason, man, that feeling go away. It ain't there always. You know, it, it, it's gone. It, it has really, as, as, as Solomon said, it's all vanity. You know, it, it, it's going to pass away. It really don't mean that. Then I need something else, Pastor. Then I need something over here. Oh, I got to have this over there. But ain't none of it filling me. Ain't none of it filling me up until the Spirit of the Lord comes inside of you and make you perfect. Establish you. Strengthens you with nothing. I don't care what's coming on, what's going on in this world, what's going on in your life. Ain't nothing going to move you. And that settles it. Let, let the whole world fall down. Jesus says it's going to come to an end. But what we got to be worried about? You know, we're not appointed to wrath and we know this, but we still, Lord, help us today. Help us, God. Help us to be persistent. Knocking on God's door for these gifts. Because that gift, man, I'm telling you, in that gift is, is peace. In that gift is joy. In that gift is faith. In that gift is meekness and temper. In that gift, man, is the gift of healing, the gift, uh, 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 the gift of, of prophecy, the gift of miracles. In that gift is the gift of faith. In that, in that gift is it, everything that you need. Godliness is profitable unto all things. That's what, that's what the writer's talking about. That's, that's true godliness. So knock on his door. Knock. He wants you to knock. We got to start knocking. Watch us. He don't let this church fill up. If we do it his way, this is his way. He said, how much more 
shall the heavenly father give unto you the Holy Spirit. He didn't say how much more he would give you that call, that, that, that strength. All these gifts come from God, from the father of life. But God wants you to have the most precious gift. You know, our, our trees are getting full right now for Christmas. All them gifts under there. Tons of them. <laughs> Kids open up them gifts. We say, Pat, they play with the box and leave the toys. <laughs> well, they play with that toy for about, but for a moment, as Paul said, and they leave it alone. Man, the soul, the soul of man is looking for something greater than what, we, what we're doing. That soul, man, is hungry. He knows that there is a fulfillment out there. He knows there's something greater that he's supposed to have. That soul man knows that he's hungry, he's groaning, and what the world has cannot fulfill it. It's only through Christ Jesus. Knock on his door. Be, pers be uh, per per persistent. Be dogmatic. And have that confidence that when you're knocking that you're going to get. Don't ask a miss. Ask according to his will. And if we ask according to his will, we know that we should have the, the desires, the petition that we desire of him. There's another knock. You ain't the only one knocking on a friend's door. The friend is knocking too. Jesus said, I stand at your door and I knock. He's knocking. He's still standing. How persistent is he? He ain't left. He ain't said, well, forget it. He's still knocking. Every time you feel like that you need to give your life to the Lord, your feet get light, your heart get heavy, you want to say, Lord, I want to do, but you, it's some things that you, you think that you need to quit doing. Yes, you do, but you can't quit. That's the devil. You need the Holy Spirit. You need Jesus. He's knocking at your door. He said, he said I stand at your door and I'm knocking. I'm being persistent. And I'm not going to knock. I'm not going to stop until there's a time that he's going to stop knocking. And the door is going to shut. And he's going to have his children in his bosom. And you're going and you to listen. And it's going to be so silent that we don't hear no knocks. He's going to be gone. And all of his children, all of his loved ones too. He said, I stand at the door and knock. He said, if you open it up, if any man hear my voice, they hear his voice in church, they hear his voice on the radio, they hear his voice at work, they hear it in the street, they hear his voice. But they ain't opening up that door. He said, but if you open up the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. He said, I'm going to have a relationship with you. And we're going to build the kingdom. I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you. I'm going to use God has need for you, you, and everybody. That's why the devil don't want to let you go. That's why he don't want to let you loose. That's why he wants you always got your mind on things and what we're going to do this week. You know, when was the last time we said, okay, well, what are we going to do in this church this week? How can we open up the doors not only on Wednesdays, pastors, and Sunday morning? Or what, what can we do on Tuesday? What about Thursday? You know, can we add another day? This is where I am. Ain't nothing else out there I want to do. It's a lot of things that I want to quit doing. I got that before God. But Lord, I want your will to be done. The only way we can get this thing done is his way. I'm sorry. Only way we can get it done is his way. It don't make no difference how old you are, how young you are. God got use for you. He got need of you. He can use you. He called the young because they're strong. You know, the young people are saying they're old now. You know, they're 25 and 30, they're old. Like, good Lord, I wish I could get that youth back. And old people feel like, well, my days are up. You still here, and God still need you too. We got work to do. God got work to do. You know, Jesus, He finished His work. It's finished. 
Don't y'all know it's all finished? It's over with for him? He said, I go prepare a place for you. That where I am, that you may be also. He's still work, he working for us. You know? But we got to have that confidence in him. We got to have faith in, in Christ. We got to have faith. We got to have that faith. We got to believe. God wants us to be persistent about his work. The Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Let's start asking for them. You know, I used to, I ain't going to lie. I used to be kind of shy. Lord, if you come down and serve us, so reserved. You come down and serve and you fill me with the Holy Ghost, what I speak. All kind of stuff the devil was, I mean, he was playing all kind of tricks on my mind, you know. Lord, whatever you do in this season, don't do it without me. If you want to use me as a healer to heal somebody, use me. If you want to use me to do miracles, use me. If you want to use me, God, to discern the spirit, use me. If you want to use me, God, to be more patient, use me. Ask God to use you. He wants to use you. We reserved. We're all fresh meat. You know, we, hey, boy, we ain't been touched. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> God has been good to us. Come on, give God some praise this morning. He's been good. I'm going to leave you with one scripture. He that come to God must believe that he is, that he exists. God hears you when you pray. He hears you. You must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently. I've been repenting. I don't know about y'all. I've been repenting. Said, Lord, I ain't been diligently. You know, my knock got faint. I didn't know what to say down there. He, you, know, you ain't got to have nothing to say, Brother Al. Come down and sit like Mary did. And choose the best thing. Listen to what he's got to say. Listen to what I got to say. God want to speak too. But we do all of the talking. We his mouthpiece. You know, God told me to say. God said, be slow to speak, swift to hear. Study to be quiet. Man, it's hard for us to do, ain't it? Woo we Study, he said. Get you a book on about being quiet. Get you a teacher. Remember, see, that's why we need them. Get, Brittany, teach us how to be quiet. Get a book so we can hear God. Man, I'm done. I'm, look, let's be persistent. The things that you need. God said, look, before you even ask, I knew already what you need. These things. He said, don't ask. Don't, 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 don't. This is me saying. <laughs> Tell my kid, don't look, man, don't be worried me about those things. I know, Kobe, you need a pair of shoes. I know you need some old sweatpants. I know they, they riding up, they getting a little high. I know that. But ask for the more precious gift. Seek. For the most precious gift. Knock on my door for that most precious gift. And God will move in this church. He wants to move. Man, I'm gonna come. He brought us out here, brought other folk out here, but a lot of folk turned and walked away. We've seen a lot of folk leave here and we passed. And a lot of people said, well, because y'all church and this and, and that. You know, we, we, I think we've just been asking to miss like everybody else. Has been asking to miss that they may consume of their own lust too, that they can have. You know, Lord, fill this place up with the gifts of the Spirit. You know, watch and see, don't the church fill up? Because it's going to be the Spirit doing it, not you. It's going to be God moving in here, not you. Remember, the man came in and fixed the door lock? I'm sweeping, minding my business. He can't even put the lock on. He over. And I'm standing back there looking at him like, smiling. He's like, I mean, I ain't kidding. I wish I had a camera. He was like, man, dude, 
Man, there's something in this place, man. <laughs> I'm telling you what I saw and what I heard. God going to look, God, God got this. We just got to line up. Stand to your feet. God bless you this morning. Be persistent. And know that when you come to God, know that he exists. He hears you. That's what we say. I, I, I'm, I'm not dead. I'm alive. You know, I'm the living word. My word is with you, but I'm still here too. Anybody need prayer this morning? Anybody need to stand in the gap for somebody? You need to touch and agree on anything. I know we all got it together, but sometimes, man, you got to have somebody to help you, stand with you. I know we're strong. <laughs> 